Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and I'm going to talk about dynamic explicit step in Abacus. This is the table of content of video. First of all, I will talk about Abacus structural solvers. Then I will talk about introduction to dynamic explicit step. Then I will talk about some aspects of explicit integration scheme implemented in dynamic explicit step. Then I will talk about capabilities of dynamic explicit step in solving mechanical problems. Then I will talk about advantages of dynamic explicit step. Then I will talk about conclusion of this video. Abacus has two structural solvers for solving mechanical and structural problems. Abacus Standard and Abacus Explicit. Abacus Standard uses implicit integration techniques for solving linear and nonlinear problems, and Abacus Explicit Solver uses explicit integration techniques for solving linear and nonlinear problems. Both of these solvers are very powerful in solving nonlinear mechanical problems. In the step module, when you want to create the first step, you can choose dynamic explicit step from this list. Dynamic explicit is one of the available steps of Abacus explicit solver. Notice that each of the Abacus solvers has their own steps. For example, the dynamic implicit step is one of the steps of Abacus standard solver or the coupled temp displacement step is one of the steps of Abacus standard solver. Originally, the dynamic explicit step is developed for simulating linear and nonlinear dynamic problems. For example, it is suitable for analyzing low and high velocity impact, explosion, shock, wave propagation simulation, and other dynamic problems. By using some tools and physical concepts, you can use this step for simulation of static and quasi-static problems such as some of the metal forming processes, quasi-static tests like 3 and 4 point bending tests and tensile tests too. Notice that the static general step is originally developed for simulation of static and quasi-static problems. But in some of the problems, this step has some limitations and because of these limitations if you use the static general step you will encounter convergence errors like too many attempt error so you must change your strategy for the simulations and you can use dynamic explicit step. I want to talk about some aspects of explicit integration scheme implemented in dynamic explicit step. In dynamic explicit step, the time increment size can be determined from two methods, fixed method and automatic method. Automatic and fixed. In fixed 
method, you must determine the size of time increment for abacus. For example, this number 0 0.00001. This number will not change during the analysis. In automatic method, the abacus explicit solver will determine the time increment size itself. In this method, the time increment size can change during the analysis. Usually, the time increment size decreases during the analysis. The rule of determination of the time increment size when using the automatic method is this. Delta T is smaller than this number. This parameter is the characteristic length of element. It is a function of element dimensions. And for each type of element, it has a specific definition and a specific function. This parameter is the speed of sound or mechanical wave in the material. In the solid materials, you can calculate the approximate amount of speed of sound by using this equation. This parameter is the Young modulus and this parameter is the density. For calculating the global time increment size, Abacus Explicit will search the whole model and the smallest calculated time increment size will be chosen. The Explicit Integration Scheme is conditionally stable. The stability condition depends on the time increment size. If you use the automatic type of incrementation, the calculations are always stable because the algorithm always choose a time increment size below the stability limit. But if you use the fixed type of incrementation, your chosen time increment size always must be less than the stability limit. If during the simulation, the current stability limit goes below the chosen time increment size, the simulation is not stable anymore and the running must be terminated. This is a picture of the job monitor dialog box of a running job that is running by using Abacus Explicit Solver and the step is Dynamic Explicit. This column shows the elapsed time from the start of the simulation. And this column shows the time increment size. Here, I have used the automatic incrementation and the solver calculates the stable time increment itself. When using the Abacus Explicit Solver, since the time increment size is usually very small, therefore the simulation needs a large number of increments. When using the automatic incrementation technique, the bigger the dimensions of elements, the greater the time increment size. The time increment size will be restricted by the element with the minimum time increment size. The bigger the amount of Young modulus, the smaller the time increment size, and the bigger the amount of density, the bigger the time increment size. I want to talk about the capabilities of dynamic explicit step in solving mechanical problems. All of the capabilities and advantages of dynamic explicit step compared with a static general step and dynamic implicit step are due to the explicit integration. By using explicit integration scheme, dynamic explicit step can solve highly nonlinear mechanical problems. 
including contact analysis and damage analysis. By using dynamic explicit step, even you can simulate the high velocity impact of deformable projectile with deformable target. Notice that the high velocity impact of deformable projectile with deformable target is one of the most highly nonlinear and complex simulations that cannot be done by using Abacus standard solver. And for this simulation, you can only use Abacus explicit solver. And if you only want to study the mechanical effects, you must use dynamic explicit step. By using dynamic explicit step, you can simulate damage initiation and damage propagation without any concern about convergence problems. There is no iteration in the explicit integration scheme, so there is no convergence problem. Now I want to show you some of the examples that are solved by using dynamic explicit step. First of all, I want to show you the deep drawing simulation that is one of the famous metal forming processes. For having a faster simulation, I have used symmetry in this simulation and I have simulated a part of the model. I have defined symmetric boundary conditions at this edge and at this edge. Now I want to show you the simulation of extrusion process by using the dynamic explicit step. I have simulated this problem in the axisymmetric space because of the geometrical symmetry in the model.
for having more accurate simulation i have used ale technique for the workpiece now i want to show you the simulation of reverse extrusion process You must use a special type of ALE technique for performing this simulation. Now I want to show you the simulation of high velocity impact of rigid projectile with deformable target. Now I want to show you the simulation of high velocity impact of deformable projectile with deformable target. You can see that the projectile is damaged too.
because I have defined it as a deformable body that can deforms and damaged. During the simulation, because of using the explicit integration method, no iteration is performed. So in highly nonlinear simulations, using dynamic explicit step is faster than using a static general step and dynamic implicit step. When using the dynamic explicit step, the use of parallelization capability in the job module is more effective than its use for static general and dynamic implicit steps. During the simulation, dynamic explicit step needs fewer space of RAM than dynamic implicit and static general steps because the solver of these two steps is Abacus standard. For some of the large deformation problems, including bulk metal forming processes, such as extrusion and reverse extrusion, you must use the ALE technique that is available for this step. In some of the problems, the size of deformations is so much that it cannot be simulated by using static general and dynamic implicit steps because the ALE technique is not available for them. In this picture, the computational cost of using explicit integration scheme and implicit integration scheme for a main problem is compared. You can see that as the number of elements in the model increases in a special point, the cost of simulation that is done by using explicit method is less than the cost of simulation that is done by using implicit method. Because this curve is linear and this curve is nonlinear. Now I want to talk about the conclusions. Dynamic explicit step uses explicit integration scheme for solving linear and nonlinear mechanical models. You can use dynamic explicit step even for static and quasi-static simulations, and dynamic explicit step is more powerful than static general and dynamic implicit steps in performing highly nonlinear simulations. You can contact me by using one of these ways using Telegram and WhatsApp or sending email. And these are our paid services. Notice that all of our services are paid services and we do not have any free services. And thank you so much for your attention and concentration. Good luck.